Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made all of these cards using just three pieces of pattern paper and some coordinating cardstock. And I did it using those pages from our paper pads that we usually don't use for card making. I hope you'll stick around and see how I made these. I want to say a great big welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers. I'm so glad that you're here again. And if this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. Like I mentioned in the intro, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I turned these three pieces of pattern paper into those cards that you just saw on my desktop. Now, I'm not sure what you want to call these pages. Let me know below what you call them. I would call them like border pages or scrapbooking pages, but I was thinking that if you enjoy this video today, it could be a series, but I'd like help kind of naming it. So again, let me know below what you call these pages in your like hot buy pads or your paper collections. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the basic process of how I created each of these 16 cards. I have a lot of different tips and techniques that I use, so I hope you'll stick around through the whole video to see how I created these. I also, at the end of this video, have a close-up of each card for you so you can see the little differences. Now, while this video is long enough that you might want to go ahead and grab yourself a drink or a snack, I think you'll find that it's going to be worth it to watch it. Let's get crafty! I'm going to start with the two pattern papers that look similar. I will be doing the same cards with both of these. I'm going to cut one side so that it's five and a quarter inches tall and then cut that into three pieces that are four inches wide. On the other side of that pattern paper, I'm going to cut it to four inches tall and then cut off two pieces that are five and a quarter inches wide. So that will give me five card bases from this pattern paper. Now I am going to save that little strip in the center for later, just in case it comes in handy. Once I had both of those pattern pieces cut, I got out a couple pink card stocks that coordinated with each one. I am going to cut these pink pieces so each of the pattern papers have a very small mat around the edge. I cut these to 5 and 3 8 inches wide by 4 and an eighth inches tall. Next thing I did was I got out the strip of white wood grain paper that was left when I cut that pattern paper and I'm cutting this into three pieces that are four inches by two inches and these will be what I stamp the sentiments on. Now for the black background paper, I really can't stamp on that and have anything show up. So I got out the third piece of pattern paper and I'm gonna cut a few pieces out of this that are two inches by four inches at as well and that way then the ink will show up on that light pink background and then for now I'll just set the rest of that aside and we'll come back to these cards later I'm gonna be cutting a fishtail in the end of each of those pieces. And to do this, I just got out my Stampin' Up! Triple Banner Punch. This cuts fishtail ends in one inch, one and a half inch, and two inch pieces. I wanted to add a little mat to those sentiment strips to help it stand out from the card background. So for the white wood grain pattern paper strips, I got out some of the scraps of the light pink cardstock, and I just cut these in strips that were two and one eighth inches wide. Now for the ones with the dark wood grain background, I just got out a scrap of white cardstock and cut three pieces that were two and eighth inches wide. For my sentiments on these cards, I'm going to be using Reverse Confetti's The Most Beauty stamp set. I will be stamping that in Stampin' Up's Basic Gray, and if you haven't ever seen this Reverse Confetti set, it is awesome. It's really versatile, the sayings on it. I will have it linked in the description box below if you want to go check it out. I chose three of the sentiments to use for these cards and I will be stamping each one twice, once on the white wood grain paper and then once on the pink polka dotted paper.
Since I already have my stamping mat out, I decided to go ahead and stamp the sentiments for the horizontal cards. I'm going to be stamping these in stays on black ink onto vellum strips. So what I did here is I got out of scrap of vellum and I cut it so it was one inch tall. And then the set I got out for these is Sweet and Sassy Stamps Be Encouraged. Again, a lot of great sentiments in this set and I will have that linked below as well. For this stamp set, I did choose four different sentiments. I chose two that were longer and two that were shorter. The long ones I just tried to center left to right. And then you'll see here in just a minute that if I had a shorter one, I left it so it was more to the right of that strip, but still trying to leave that same amount over on the right. To help hide the adhesive on the vellum, I will be wrapping the excess on the sides to the back and gluing it down there. This way again it hides the adhesive and it gives a nice finished look. Once I had the sentiment on there, I adhered that to the pink cardstock mat. I then continued this same process for the rest of the vellum sentiment strips. And now it's time to add a little bit of embellishing to these cards. I got out some Nuvo Crystal Clear Drops, and then for the white background cards, I got out some really pretty light pink glittered enamel dots. Now with the crystal drops, I did add those, and then I set that aside to carefully dry out of the way so I wouldn't smush those. And I really love how these turned out. This was my first time using it. I definitely see a lot of crystal drops in my future. While the Nuvo drops were drying, I went back to my vertical cards and I'm gonna start getting these put together. The first thing I did was put the pattern paper onto the pink mat and then I matted the sentiment fishtail banner with the pink strip that matched. Then you'll see I just got out some fine tip scissors and did my best to finish making that mat at the end. You can always too if it doesn't look perfect if it's not at the right angle like mine wasn't just go back in and fix that. This piece then got adhered flat down onto the matted pattern paper. I then continued the same process for the rest of the vertical cards, but with the dark wood grain background, I used the pink polka dot sentiments instead. These card fronts also needed some embellishing, so I got out some kind of holographic clear gems and added three to the front of each card. Now it was time to move on to that third piece of pattern paper. The first pieces I'll be using are the corner elements. I got out a couple sentiment dies from Stamp Anything. I got out a piece of white fun foam. This was just from the kids craft section and then my scotch blue removable tape. Now this tape is going to come in handy because I want to place that die and have it stay in the spot I want it on the pattern paper. This scotch blue tape, it adheres nicely and does not tear any of that pattern paper up. So even after I run it through the die cutter, it pulls free of that pattern paper, leaving it looking just great. Now these cards, I'm gonna be creating an eclipse effect. And what that is, I will be placing those words back in the card front exactly where they go, but they're gonna be raised up on fun foam. I did my best to add my card front to the card base with my ATG, but because there are some little fine pieces that I really couldn't use that on, I got out my art glitter glue with that super fine tip and I just went in and put a little more adhesive around those pieces that wanted to lift up. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my word die cut and I'm gonna place that back in the card front 
in that open space. Now do not glue this down. This is just gonna be for a placeholder. You'll want to make sure that you keep all those teeny tiny parts because now we're gonna glue those in. To do this, I put a little bit of the glue in the opening and then I tried to spread it around a little bit with that tip. But as I was kind of smushing those negative pieces back into the die, it helped spread that out as well. Now for those last few that are teeny tiny, I did get out my quick pick tool to pick those up and put them where they go. This helped a lot with placement. Once that's done, you're gonna carefully peel back the word die and set that to the side because we do still need that. Now it's time to start building that eclipse effect. Off camera, I cut two copies of each of the word dies from the white foam, and now I'm gonna use my same art glitter glue to adhere the first one into the opening on the card front. I put glue in about half of the word, carefully put my thanks in there, and then put some glue down in the second half. You'll want to be pretty careful and pretty detailed with putting this down so later the layers lay nicely on top of each other. Once that was all in place, I put a clear stamp block on top of it and set it to the side to dry. Next, I added the second foam thanks to the back of the pattern paper thanks. Once those two pieces were put together, this also got set to the side to dry. Once both pieces were dry, I then added my pattern paper thanks on top of the one that was adhered to the card front. You'll want to do this kind of carefully just so they line up nicely, and then once again, it gets a stamp block and gets set to the side to dry. Next, we're gonna be using up that center strip from the third pattern paper. I cut two pieces that were three and three quarters inches wide by five inches tall. Then I got out my Misty and my three and three quarter inch wreath builder and we're gonna stamp a couple wreaths on these. Now you'll notice that the piece is longer than the standard square you would usually put into your wreath builder, but that's okay, the bottom will just hang out. When you are stamping a wreath on a paper like this and you want it toward the top, you're gonna make sure that after you stamp, when you rotate it, that the top of your card always fits in the template. That way your wreath is going to be built correctly and look good on the final piece. I won't make you watch every step of building both of these wreaths, but just know that I don't switch out the stamp until I have used it on both pieces of pattern paper. All of my stamps for these wreaths today come from the Gina K Designs Wreath Builder Stamp Set. If you haven't been able to tell from my videos lately, I am loving building wreaths. Here's a look at both of the pieces when I was finished stamping, and you'll notice that the one on the right, I had stamped some pink flowers in the center. I did not like that, so I did not duplicate that on the second one, and later those will be hidden by the sentiment. Speaking of sentiment, it is time to start stamping those for the cards. I will be using the same one on both cards. It says a friend like you is hard to find. And I just got out a scrap of white cardstock for these. Once I've stamped it once, I'll rotate the cardstock and stamp it again. Off camera, I cut a couple pink mats for my wreath focal points, and I'm gonna be punching a scallop circle out of the center of both of those. This will not be seen from the card front, so it makes good use of your card stock. I got out another circle punch for the sentiment. I think this is either one and three quarters or two inches. I centered the sentiment in there as best as I could, and then I punched it out. Once those pieces were put together, I matted my wreath piece onto the pink mat, and then I adhered my sentiment piece to the scallop circle. Now before I can put the foam on the back of these and put my card fronts together, I did want to add some twine. So I got out some white twine that I had left over from a Stampin' Up! paper pumpkin kit, and I placed some adhesive on the back of my card front. This helps that twine stay in place. I wrapped it around there about three times, 
adjusted the edges so it looked nice, and then I double knotted another piece onto those strings and cut the tails off. Once I had the card fronts adhered to my card bases, I got out some Stampin' Up! dimensionals. I put some of these on the back of the sentiment piece, and then I adhered that right in the center of the wreath. Now later you'll see how the other sentiment hides those four flowers that I kind of goofed up on. And now it's time to create the final two cards. These will use those last two pieces of pink pattern paper. Off camera, I cut some pieces of white cardstock. The first two were four inches by five and a quarter inches, and the second two were three and an eighth by four and seven eighths. For my final focal points, I'm going to create kind of a wood floor background. The first thing I do is cut strips from the pink pattern paper that are three quarters of an inch wide by four and three quarters inches tall. I'm going to cut four of these planks from each of the pink pattern papers. Once I had all of my planks cut, I got out my Gina K Designs Dusty Rose ink spot and I inked each of the edges. On the final piece, this just gives it kind of a weathered look. Once each of those were inked, I then started building my floor. Off camera, I cut two pieces of white cardstock to three inches wide by four and three quarters inches tall. I then ran these through my Xyron so I would have a nice sheet of adhesive on one side of the cardstock. To create my faux wood floor, I take my first plank of pattern paper and I place that about a third of the way into the cardstock and then trim off the excess. Then I flip that piece around and butt it up against the other side of it. My next plank goes about two thirds of the way in and the same things happen. I trim off the excess and flip it around. Now the third plank will fill the height from top to bottom. Then I just place one more like the first and then my wood floor is almost done. Because I have cut off some edges, they're not all inked. So I just bring back in that ink cube and go around the outside and ink it all up so everything looks nice and aged. Because my card is going to have three layers of white cardstock right on top of each other, I wanted to add a little extra texture to that center piece. So I ran both of my four by five and a quarter inch pieces through my cuddle bug in the dots embossing folder. This adds a little extra texture and helps you see the difference between the card base itself and my layer of white cardstock. I will be adding these wreath sticker die cuts to my focal point, but before I can put those down with the foam tape, I need to stamp my sentiments. Now, in order to know where the sentiment needs to be stamped, I temporarily adhere those wreaths to my wood floor with some scotch blue removable tape. Then I was able to put these focal points into my Misty, align those stamps just right, and you'll see I did move my wreath a little bit, but because I'm using that blue removable tape, it doesn't ruin my focal point in any way. Once I had that set up where I wanted it to stamp, I got back out that dusty rose ink spot and I stamped both of my sentiments. Like I mentioned before, these are actually die cut stickers. I got these at Hobby Lobby and they match the in bloom paper line, but because they are stickers, I need to take that stickiness off the back of it before I can put it on my card front. So to do that properly, I pulled the release paper off the back of the die cut sticker. I placed my Stampin' Up! dimensionals where I wanted them to go on the wreath. Then I got out my embossing buddy bag and I just tap that on the back where it is still sticky at. Once there is no more tack left, I then release the paper on the back of the dimensionals and place my wreath on my card front. And now it is time to get these cards put together. I started by adhering both of my focal points aligned to the left on the front of the cards. 
Once both of those were in place, I pulled out my pink glittery enamel dots again and I placed a few on the front of each card. And here is a close up look at all of the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my cards today. As always, if you did, I appreciate a thumbs up on this video. And don't forget, let me know below what you call those pages. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.